What's up everybody, it's Dakota, and today you can probably already take a guess of what we're going over. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of the deck lists from Pro Tour Amonkhet, uh, namely the Mono Black Zombies and the Marvelous Teamer Energy, because they, one, they were the first and second place decks, two, this is kind of give, give you an idea of what the metagame is going to look like and what we're shifting to now that Felidar Guardian was banned, I believe, almost a month ago. At this point, maybe it's only been a few weeks, I'm, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but given the fact that we lost one of the decks that made up about 40% of the meta, I believe, a, a ridiculous number, um, right now we are looking at two decks that are clearly the decks to beat, Mardu Vehicles falling off in favor of Mono Black Zombies, or as you can see, uh, Chris Fennell's uh, five through eight finish. I believe he was the first one out, so he he got eighth or whatever. It doesn't matter because they all get paid the same. Everything, all that. He played a white version, and we'll actually check it out here in a second because I saw a few of the decks being played, and basically it's splashing white for anguish unmaking. One well, the one on the sideboard, declaration stone, Gideon, and that's about it. I saw some decks like this playing Gideon in the main deck instead of playing um, maybe Anguish Unmaking or another like Wayward Servant or just one of the other creatures, which from what I can see the actual adding of white in the deck is more or less free because of cards like Concealed Courtyard and Shambling Vent. And you could even play Aether Hub, I guess, in, in those decks just as like a one time like Here's here's my mana for black or for white, and then done with it. But considering how demanding I guess it is in the in the black color for zombies, the mono black version is a more streamlined and all in deck as far as zombies because you get cards like Crypt Breaker, Diagraph Colossus, Dread Wanderer, and Lord of the Accursed, Metallic Mimic and Relentless Dead, all creatures that you can play in the Orzhov Zombies deck, or the Black White Zombies deck, whatever you want to call it, but it just, it's it's able to go more all-in by playing Liliana's Masteries, it still has great removal and Grasp of Darkness and Fatal Push and Dark Salvation, which turned out to be probably one of, seemed like one of the best removal spells in, in the deck because it already naturally plays a bunch of zombies. It just gets a lot of zombies. So Dark Salvation, actually let me pull it up here. Target player puts X2-2 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield and then up to one target creature gets minus one, minus one for each zombie that player controls. So for essentially one mana on like turn three, you have like three zombies, it's it's a removal spell for a three toughness creature, like an X3 creature, which I'd say is pretty good. Um, in a format that where we have Fatal Push and there's no reliable way to revolt it to actually kill those two toughness, or two toughness, those two CMC creatures and not a real good way to get those four CMC creatures, the creatures that are being played that do get hit by this makes this card really strong. Also, the fact that in the late game, it's not a dead card because you can just give yourself, like, you know, you have seven mana, you get three zombies, and then you maybe give something next six, next six, or next seven, next seven, which is good enough to kill just about everything so far, except for the next deck we're kind of going to look into, and then uh, we'll get into actually looking at the cards, sideboards, going over strategy and everything, but the... Marvelous Teamer energy decks or just the energy decks in general that are playing Aetherworks Marvel. So I was talking about how the removal spell Dark Salvation is is really good. It, it hits most of the creatures just for one black, like, you know, minus three, minus three, minus four, minus four. It does its job, and then in the late game, it's not necessarily a dead card as long as there's a creature to, to kill with it. Well, the one creature it isn't going to kill, or it's going to have a hard time killing, 
is Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Um, this card's been in standard for a long time, obviously just as long as Gideon, but this card is way more annoying, in my, in my opinion, when someone is playing a deck based around playing big, dumb things for free, aka any Aetherworks Marvel deck. This card will be the bane of your existence, and even sometimes is good against the Zombies deck, believe it or not, and a deck that wants to go wide this card is somehow still good considering obviously it it's indestructible so it's just gonna get in front of anything if it manages to get something that's bigger than it it's not gonna die so it still blanks that creature or in almost all cases it's going to destroy whatever it's blocking and we kind of move on from it you know, or maybe we don't move on from it. We still have a 10-10 that literally whenever it attacks, you exile a third of your opponent's library. So, Dark Salvation, a really good card. This card, though, I guess essentially blanks it. But, obviously, if, like, if you're able to cast this like on turn 4, you're probably winning the match. And if you're not winning the match, then your opponent had some seriously good luck on basically getting two of their permanents exiled and then this card still just does nothing or they even if they counter it exiling two permanents from your opponent on turn four whether it's like two lands you know they're now they're on two lands while you're on four essentially going to five lands and getting into basically just playing like your your other creatures and stuff like rogue refiner in in this situation, if you play a type of build that Yu Yu Watanabe played, you have Torrential Gearhulk as like your top end, you know, you're one mana off from casting it essentially. Or if you have a. Well, in this one, there's no Servant of the Conduit, but the other ones that play Servant of the Conduit, you basically can leave up Torrential Gearhulk. You have Whirler Virtuoso to make Thopters. You have Attune with Aether and Sensor. Um, a tune with Aether, obviously, to get you a basic land and get energy on turn one to build up for your Aetherworks Marvel sensor, turning out to be way better than what I thought it would be, considering that the cycle costs seem to make it good, or people just naturally have uh, mana left up to pay an extra, you know, one, two, or three. This card is really solid. And then also to think about too, if you don't want to play sensor, if you think that the cycling is unimportant and that you want them to pay more than one, there is a card called Spell Shrivel, which basically you pay one more mana to have them pay an extra four. So, it, I mean, it's you take what take what you can get, but sensor seems like it's a better card to play against other decks, and if you're playing the Marvel deck. Sensor is a really a really good card. It also cycles, so you get deeper to get to like your Dissenter's Deliverance. Playing against the Mirror Match, you have Glimmer of Genius, another good card. That if you just cycle into it, you know you build up your your mana. Turn four, you play a Glimmer of Genius and a turn, draw two cards, digging for your Marvel or just digging for more lands or more ways to make energy to keep feeding your Aetherworks Marvel. Uh, Kozilek's Return, just one good sweeper be done and over with it especially against like the zombie decks before they actually start uh, building up lord effects you can play Kozilek's return wipe them away and then when you cast your ulamog you sweep away the board and you get a 10-10 bit virtually that your opponent just has to have a creature for every turn to answer while they are also losing chunks and chunks of their library negate just a solid card in standard right now as you can see it plays three more in the sideboard so four total in the gate in the deck um would weaver's puzzle not just probably the best bang for your mana as far as getting energy and it also gains you some life too which can let you stall out for the uh, late game if you know you're still digging for marvel or you have marvel this thing just feeds it and for essentially five mana of investment you get a free spin off marvel which I'd say is pretty good, a pretty good rate considering that you're paying three for three energy one time where you can pay two for three energy and then three for three energy. And then if you have an Aetherworks Marvel out, you get four energy essentially. 
um, in the sideboard. Dispel, negate, Azure, counter magic package, along with uh, cards like Sensor. Basically, just trying to become a more controlling matchup in the sense that you want to play the long game. And I think that's what people don't see is that the Aetherworks Marvel decks are kind of evolving from just a streamline play Aetherworks Marvel spin it, hope you get Nulamog, hope you get one of your big threats, and then just win the game from there. The decks actually have a better a better chance now, especially with Felidar Guardian being banned and Mardu Vehicles not really being played that much, is that they get access to a lot of sweepers. I know I built a, a version of this deck, but instead of a Teamer Aetherworks deck, it was Ban Aetherworks, and it basically just hates on decks that want to go wide by playing main deck fumigates and just different ways to interact with creatures and other ways to interact with other Aetherworks Marvel decks. And with the teamer version of it, you do get cards like Boiler Virtuoso, so you have more sinks for your energy other than Aetherworks Marvel. So where if you don't hit Marvel or you don't have Marvel, you have another card, in this case Boiler Virtuoso, that'll let you use that energy for something positive. And then, of course, cards like Harness Lightning, probably one of the best red removal spells we have in standard is, you know, for creatures. Magma Spray probably being the next one, but Harness Lightning just being better because you are an energy deck. You're going to be able to kill almost everything except for other Ulamogs, but, of course, Indestructible, so that, that, that really wouldn't matter even if you could get enough energy. But I would love to see someone do that. That'd be funny. Um... Still going through the sideboard, going back to it anyway. Uh, Bristling Hydra is actually really interesting. Um, paying the three energy when it's already on the battlefield, you get three energy, and you can pay three to put a counter on it and give it hexproof until end of turn. Can be really relevant. Just you have a big threat on the board, and you're constantly threatening with giving it hexproof anytime your opponent has a removal spell. Eventually, getting to the point where you could just add counters twice to it. And again, you want to play the slow game with this deck, or you don't mind playing the long game with this deck, just because you can gain life, you can out-tempo your opponent, and then eventually just keep spinning your Marvel until you hit something good, and and that's the, and then that can be the game, that can be the difference. So Bristling Hydra just gives you a annoying threat to deal with, where your opponent has to have a removal spell plus removal spell on top of activation, <clears throat> while you only have enough energy to activate it once or for obviously every time that you can activate it they have to have an additional removal spell for it so bristling hydra can be super annoying radiant flames is another way to sweep away small creatures Kozilek's return does a pretty good job of it but radiant flames has the potential to do three damage to each creature which obviously is is very good considering you are playing a three color deck with aether hubs you have the potential for of a of, of fourth color, which obviously for Radiant Flames won't come up, but it's just good to know that you are playing a deck that feasibly can get multiple colors if, should that ever, should the need ever arise. Probably never will, but it's something to, something to think about. Um, two Shielded Aether Thief, um, just a really good card, so one, f two mana, 04, that you block Ian energy with it. Super, not maybe not super good, but again, it gives you another place to put your energy if you don't have anything, like paying three energy to draw a card. With a 0-4 body, it blanks a lot of uh, creatures in the beginning, so it's, it just ends up being a wall that your opponent can't get through unless they have a removal spell or say magma spray or combat damage plus magma spray to get rid of it but they spent a combat and a card to get rid of a uh, two mana 04 so shielded aether thief taking up two spots there and then the last one being tireless tracker and again it goes back to playing the late game uh being the mid-range slash late game deck that's what you want to be doing is playing lands Building up clues, sacrificing your clues, making your tireless trackers bigger to the point where your opponent cannot deal with them, 
or it makes it hard for them to try to deal with them, and then they eventually just take over the game, drawing you cards, getting you more spells, and, again, just essentially wanting to take over the game. So, in, in a nutshell, while going over this deck and my ADD kicking in and going over other decks, this is essentially the build that you want for an Aetherworks Marvel deck is a deck aimed towards dealing with creatures because of the decks like the Mono Black Zombies and the Orzhov Zombies or the other Mono Black Zombies deck that was in uh, in the top eight by Christian Calcano. Really, you can't rely on dealing X damage to them in the late game because of they have cards like Liliana's Mastery that gives your zombies plus one plus one and makes two black zombies. So for six mana you get six six or six mana you get six power worth of bodies off of five mana and that also doesn't include guys like lord of the accursed already on the battlefield or just other zombies so in theory you could have say a dread wanderer a diagraph colossus and a relentless dead on the battlefield you know that adds three four five extra power on top of already adding four base power to the board just making your zombies hard to deal with obviously then like the next turn you activate lord of the accursed or you you have a lord of the accursed play it activate it and then you're off to the races you're more than likely killing your opponent in like the next two turns unless they have something like fumigate which um a way that the orzhov zombies deck could play or it could be a better option than the mono black version if you were worried about sweepers um, playing cards like Rel not relentless dead but the spirit I can't remember the name it's actually escaping me right now it, it sucks but you sacrifice it and it gives all your creatures indestructible being a spirit it's not ideal for the deck because it wants to be playing all zombies hence why it's a mono black zombies deck but being worried about sweepers if that's really a thing that you are worried about that could be a good thing to look into when deciding between the mono black or the uh, black white zombies deck but in in my opinion i think the mono black version is just for the meta right now a better deck than the black white one like the black white one was one if I was gonna play zombies would be the one I'd play if Felidar Guardian was still in standard, and if Marty Vehicles was still uh, a heavily played deck in the in the meta. But as far as what I, what I've been seeing and everything, the Mono Black just seems better. Um, wrapping up here in the sideboard, two Aether Sphere Harvesters, three mana, basically like can swing in in two swings you end up gaining six life and. The fact that as crew one, all your creatures are two power and everything, so you're not going to have any problem crewing an Aether Sphere Harvester. You're not going to have a problem with making tokens so that you can attack with all of your creatures possible. Oh, excuse me. Um, Gauntsy, Lord of Luxury. The only other, well, the other non zombie creature in the deck, aside from Scrap Heap Scrounger. But Gauntsy. You know, unless you look at the top four cards of your opponent's library, exile one of them, and you can play one of them without, you know, by paying its mana cost, but not not worrying about the color restrictions. So you can basically, if it's CMC is six mana, you pay six black, and you can cast the card, whether it's a, a double blue spell. You can cast a Torrential Gear Hulk off of a Gaunty Lord of Luxury in a mono black deck, and it's really sweet. I like it. I saw someone cast a... A sensor on an Ulamog that was being cast off an Aetherworks Marvel. And it just seemed really good. It, it was it was hilarious to me. Um, another Grass of Darkness in the sideboard, bringing up the four total in, in the in the deck. Really solid removal spell. Neg four, neg four on almost anything, just like I was talking about with Dark Salvation. Like giving something like minus three, minus three, minus four, minus four. Usually good enough to kill it. Just obviously Grass of Darkness is two mana, neg four, neg four instead of one mana, neg four, neg four, potentially, or neg four, neg four, neg five, neg five, while getting a zombie or two in the process. Um, three Liliana, the last hope. I mean, the emblem, 
says it all. You get X22 zombies, where X is 2 plus the number of zombies you control. Easily, her ult takes over the game and makes it almost impossible for your opponent to win because you're just getting zombies at the end of your turn. Lost Legacy for basically ev like the, the mirror match, essentially. Or not the mirror match. I forgot what deck I was playing. Whoops. Uh, Lost Legacy for the energy decks that you kind of hedge on the fact that do you want to play a card that lets you get their Aetherworks Marvel or hit their creatures and it's more important to hit their big threats because they have so many redundant cards in the matchup that use energy that you instead of taking a Marvel you'd rather just take their hits so that their hits get worse in the game rather than trying to get the card that makes the deck go um, Scrap Heap Scrounger just a recursive threat, two mana, return to the battlefield, exiling a creature from your graveyard. The only way that this deck really gets cards back, or cares about cards, is Diagraph Colossus gets bigger with creatures with zombie cards in your graveyard, and Relentless Dead, when it dies, brings itself back along with another zombie that costs X, should you choose to pay X. And then finally, rounding out the sideboard, Transgress the Mind, takes just about every relevant spell that's in standard minus heart of kirin but again or in in the mirror match it's not really taking much it might hit a liliana's mastery or there's some decks that are playing liliana death's majesty and that's really about it even as far as like this deck list goes like it's taking a lord or it's taking a colossus or it's taking a Liliana's Mastery, and that's about it. So obviously not made for this matchup, but for the Aetherworks Marvel decks, or really any other deck that uh, that isn't Zombies, Transgress the Mind is great. And that's going to round out the basically going over of the Pro Tour at uh, in Nashville, Pro Tour Almanket. Great, great event. I... I Personally, I've only watched a few of the matches in the Swiss and then the semifinals matches and the finals. I know I heard something happen. I'm going to probably watch it now, just considering I just got myself all excited just going through the deck list and everything. I want to work on my deck. I want to. I just want to get into this format because it just seems like it's a lot more fun than what it was, even if it is kind of now a two- a two meta deck for the time being i think by the time our devastation comes out we can see at least another two decks break out and become successful and maybe not be like tier one decks but be able to compete with the tier one decks and kind of keep them in check so we don't have a marty vehicles sahili combo fiasco like we did about well a few months ago but yeah if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and comment if you honestly like stuff like this i want to try to go over stuff like this and kind of just throw it out there go over it take give my take on it if you have anything that i didn't go over or anything like that please let me know in the comments of the video and i will see you guys next time